Welcome back, revolutionary thinking. I am here and I have my math hat on and now I am no longer behind the scenes. You can see my face. And today I'm here with uh, Chuck Fossey and he was one of the first uh, winners of the Freedom Dividend. It was given out to two families in Iowa. Uh, I believe the guy's name in Iowa was Kyle Christensen. I think he was one of the first ones who got it. And then after him, it was uh, the Fossey family. And I'm here with the father, uh, Chuck Fossey, who's also the winners of the Freedom Dividend. So I'm just here with him to drive a point home about this this money. A lot of people are under the impression that people who are get, being given this money, it's just maybe that, oh, they don't want to work. They don't have a work ethic or, oh, they just didn't get educated from the job. But that's as far from the truth that we can think of because there is an automation tsunami that's hitting everywhere. And also, um, you can find Chuck was also on The Daily Show, and you can see his you know, things from there. He was with Ronnie Chang, and he also talked about what he did with this money. It wasn't spending it on drugs or beer or getting high or any of those things that people have these preconceived notions of. It was actually some things that were actually pretty healthy, pretty interesting, and pretty good just for overall mental and physical health. So anyway, I think I've just set a mouthful. Uh, so here's uh, Chuck. And Chuck, just go a little bit, uh, first introduce yourself a little more and then go a little bit about into your background of how uh, you, you got your first job and how you lost your first job. Well, uh, my first job and um, I went to a vocational school back in the 80s, and I took up uh, graphic communications, which was uh, printing. Um, and probably in the 90s, um, my job was actually automated away. So my, my position was actually replaced by a computer. So I walked into the shop, and there was a computer where I should be standing. And, you know, it was like, hello, meet your replacement. And so that was my first um kind of taste of automation you know I didn't really think of it on the grand scale but you know I I kind of realized that there was a lot of uh, technology that was going to be replacing workers um, so you know I worked in that field probably until the mid 90s um, and you know it, the, the field just shrunk so much and there really wasn't a lot of jobs available because a lot of the jobs were automated away um, so I actually I wound up getting a job as a service technician for a chemical company. Got it. Before you go into there, I just want to ask you, when you were taking the graphic communications classes, were any of the teachers or the instructors talking to the students about the threats of automation and you can just lose your job at any minute or that wasn't even like brought up? No, I mean, they were talking about like how some of the, uh, the industry was going to get digitized and that, you know, you should actually go into the, that, that portion of the industry, um, you know, graphic communications, whether it be desktop publishing, or video editing and things like that. Um, they weren't kind of saying that the automation was going to be replacing a ton of jobs. They were just saying that it was going to transition to digital and you needed to kind of go back to school. Um, or keep yourself uh, relevant um, by, you know, kind of making sure you have computer skills. Um, uh, I basically, see. they were just saying, make sure you have computer skills, then you'll be safe and you'll have a job. Um, and that God. really still wasn't even the case because, you know, one computer probably replaced maybe 10 to 15 workers. Got it. And and then is it like, did, were you taking these graphic communication classes in high school or once you finished? It was actually in high school, so it was a vocational school. So it, it, it you know, you hmm. you chose a, a career path, um, and then it kind of set you up, um, kind of like a technical school today. But you know, they did it a little bit earlier in the high school years. Got it. And then, and then when when the computer was there, and they just said meet your replacement, did they ever give you any kind of a warning, or you know, were about to do this, or was it just? that one day and it was just like, okay, like you're just done. Well, I mean, you know, I, I knew that, you know, my job was kind of um, going over to the, the computer portion of it, but I thought that I would be kind of trained on the machine, but 
um, they basically bought it to eliminate manpower. So there really wasn't any jobs to train me for. Um, oh. So I kind of, I knew that the technology was there and I knew that the company was thinking about, you know, purchasing it, but I didn't realize that they, they were doing it for the sole purpose of bottom line and profitability and you know, eliminating a couple of positions. I see. You know, once the, the technology became, pro, you know, um, cheap enough, you know, then, you know, if it, if it could replace a couple of workers, that's basically how they made their decision. I see. And what was it like, but, but did you, did, what, was this just slowly happening? What, what, what about the work, your coworkers? Did they, did it happen to like all of you at once or did it, did they just see that happen to you and then kind of say like, that can happen to me too, or. Well, what they did is they, they, you know, I was the first person to get eliminated, you know, but mm -hmm. what they did is they forced other people to do other jobs in order to prevent them from kind of getting laid off. So now they had a bunch more responsibilities um, on top of their current positions. So basically they, you know, they, they shifted a lot of the workload to other people. Um, so mm. yeah, it, it's just the, the way it happened. It was like, okay, we're going to eliminate this position and you're going to have to do extra work in order for you to keep your position and, and people, you know, I keep see. people quiet and, you know, keeps them kind of scared. Um, right. So, you know, gets them to get more productivity out of them. Right. So it's like to let you people kind of fight amongst yourselves and create this climate of like fear and competition. It's like, do you want to end up like that guy? If not, exactly. you better just like keep your mouth shut and do what we ask. Yeah. You got to, re you know, you got to compete with the robot nowadays. So you, you better be more productive. You better be faster, you, you know, and it, it's just the environment it, that it, it creates. Right. And, and it's probably like the worst thing for a person's mental health to always be under that stress and that pressure. Like I could imagine, you know? Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And wow. So, so then when that happened, was it just like, uh, um, okay, just buy, like, did you have to like file for, like unemployment or kind of like to to get get something while you were transitioning out or how did that go yeah i mean that was back in the 90s and they were starting like you know because it was actually becoming a problem where automation was putting a lot of people out of work um a lot of it too was um like nafta they would because mm -hmm. i think nafta was just recently passed at, at that time so they had some money for retraining programs for people that, that you know lost their job for, to either technology or to um because of the um the nafta program Got and it. you know the money that was available was really minuscule and the programs that you know i could choose from were really you know nothing great nothing that i can kind of because Sink of my dyslexia into, right yeah so um you know, I kind of limped around in the industry, got a couple of jobs here and there, but nothing. Um, and then I actually um, took a couple of computer classes to uh, learn like computer networking, which what everybody was saying, hey, go into networking. Right. And this was like right before the year 2000. So the uh, the Y2K thing was kind of going on and everybody's like, you got to go into computers. Um, and, you know, that was an industry that was a waste of money because you know, I, I was able to pass the courses, but it was like, you know, that right. technology you have to kind of constantly read up on it. And, yeah. um, it wasn't anything that I, you know, my dyslexia was going to let me do. Um, right. so I actually applied for a job as a service technician. So I kind of got out of the industry and I, I kind of saw see. the writing on the so, wall. Right. So, so then, okay. So then how, how long did it take you that once you lost that job to get that new, what was it? Chemical engineering job? Um, so it was a field service technician. Oh, field service. Working technician. for a chemical company. Oh, working for a chemical. Okay. Field service. So, yep. so, so that in that gap period, like you mind, like what was happening in your life or like, how did you manage to that, that gap? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I actually, that I was able to take night classes. So I was still working full time and I was taking classes at night. You know, when I lost my job originally, I was on unemployment for a couple of months. I was able to find another job, you know, less money, of course, you know, whatever job right. you leave, you go into right. another one, of course, they're going to pay you less money. Right. Um, so this job, um, when I was still working in the printing industry, I took some courses at night for, uh, for the computer classes. Um, so I was able to leave one job and take another one. So I didn't really have much of a gap. 
Oh, um, okay, okay, got it. So, so was the so so the new job was just like some job that maybe even just like a high school dropout could do, just like a simple kind of like menial or something different. Well, because I, I took the classes and I got you know I got some certificates, I, I got hired. Um, oh, but I, oh. I think I only lasted about eight months because oh. of how quick the technology was changing. And if you wow. weren't constantly going to school and learning all the new programs that, you know, the company that you work for, they wanted to make sure that you stayed current, but they didn't really um, provide you with the training. So it was like, if you right. wanted to, you know, keep the job, then you needed to kind of keep your education going, you know, right. so it's a lot of the, the shifting of, of the training, you know, instead of the company training you, it, so now you got to pay yourself and get trained in order to keep your job. Yeah, I know. It's it, it so so like like th this has been happening for quite a while. So yeah. I mean what what we're always told in school is that we finish school and we're good to go and we just kind of work for these companies and they just like help us to get anywhere where we want to go. So it seems like that whole thing is like a myth now from what right. I'm hearing from you. And it's been a myth because my generation was told this, you know, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, so, so that, that chemical, uh, sorry, the, a network, say that, say that one again. Field service technician. Field, yeah. Yeah. Field service technician at a chemical company. Got it. Yes. So the field, so the field service technician, um, how, how long did you keep that one? Was that, kind of automated that one lasted that i worked for the company for 14 years oh wow okay you know, so i kind of worked my way up through the the ranks um it was a tough job a lot of hours it was salary so um you know i worked 55 60 hours a week didn't get paid any overtime um and then i actually became manager and that's kind of when the problem started oh okay so so, so a field service technician was that uh computer work or uh, like with your hands or with wires or how um, it was um, like electromechanical work, um, plumbing work. Um, so it was, you know, a, a physical job. Um, there wasn't really a lot of, uh, you know, computers involved. Oh, okay. um, it was, you know, like dispensing equipment uh, with plumbing, some electrical uh, working on um, commercial dishwashers and restaurants and hospitals and things like that. So, Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I was working on electromechanical equipment. Right, right. A totally different field than when I started. Right, right. So, so it was like, and and did did you pay for all the training to get a job like that, or how how did that work? No, that one was interesting because I was actually I bought a house and I did a lot of rehab on it, and so I interviewed for a job that I didn't really think I had a shot of getting, and because oh. I was doing a lot of the work myself, you know, they were impressed, so they decided to kind of give me a shot. It was a job that I had to learn on the job, but I didn't get paid for the extra hours. So if it took me like five hours to do something, somebody who had experience would have taken them 15 minutes. It, it came out of my time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the only reason why I think I survived. Companies look for every single way they can to cut any quarter they can to, yeah. you know, save to the bottom line. Wow. So, so, so you, so if you didn't do this rehab stuff on your house, they probably wouldn't have like, helped you with anything to get training or anything like that they kind of how, how did the interview go um the interview went well um and i didn't really think i was going to get the job because i didn't really have any experience doing it mm. so i didn't you know he was just asking me personal questions about you know what i did in my free time and i just said that i was you know i purchased the house and i was doing some rehabs on it and kind of telling them what i was doing so that's what kind of impressed them Oh, okay. Um, so they decided to take a shot and hire me. And um, it wasn't exactly a, a field that there was, you know, a college program for. It was, you know, basically a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of electrical, a little bit of uh, customer service. So, right. You know, they didn't really have a program set up for it. So they kind of had to hire somebody with the hopes that, you know, they could kind of catch on and do the job well. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. And then, so why did the trouble start when you became manager or like? Well, because I, you know, I worked at the, the job for like um, 14 years and I was a manager, you know, as a manager in name only for a while, but mm -hmm. um, I was questioning the amount of hours that they were forcing us to work. It was a small mm -hmm. company and they were growing. And oh. so every time they took on more customers, that was more hours to work. 
you know, and I was getting a little tired of, of being forced to work 55, 60, sometimes 70 hours. Wow. You know? And yeah. when I became manager, um, I was trying to, you know, streamline processes, trying to, trying to make it more reasonable for the other guys working and, you know, kind of realizing that, you know, these people have family, they don't want to spend all their time. Um, and then I come to find out, you know, we were, classified as exempt. So when you're an exempt employee in a salaried position, um, that means that they don't have to pay you any overtime. They can make you work as many hours as possible. And there is no requirement for overtime because of the job classification. So when I found out that he was unfairly classifying us as exempt, meaning we were entitled to overtime, um, that's when I lost my job. Like so much like dirty politics and all of these, you know, companies and, you know, situations that never, you know, get looked at. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, I see. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to um, the labor board to try to do something about it. And, and did, did you get connection? Uh, a little bit. Uh, it's getting a little better. Uh, maybe it's the Wi-Fi. Okay, it's it's better now. Uh, so so when you went to the labor board, did did they do anything? No, didn't do anything. Um, it was like beyond their jurisdiction because I I applied for. Uh, like the state labor board um, for a grievance. And then they said that they didn't have the resources that I would need to go to the federal. So then I went to the federal and the federal said, well, it's, it's outside of our jurisdiction because you need to go to the state. So it was kind of plain ping pong. And it was like, oh, you know, I had to hire a lawyer and it was expensive. And it was just, it, 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 you know, yeah, it, it really wasn't worth it. Um, wow. But there was definitely no, nothing, you know, because clearly I, you know, I should have been being paid overtime. You know, funny thing is, is that once I left, he actually started, he had no choice, but he, he paid, started paying the, the other guys, you know, overtime. So, you know, hey, at the, least I, oh you know, did God. something. <laughs> well, well, you, you, you know what, like, I think we should Maybe switch. Benefits of it. L l like, that, that's why, like, I'm always talking about switching the narrative into the other direction, because it's really not the people yeah. who are lazy and don't want to work. It's the companies that are cheap and lazy and they don't want to think and they don't want to help people and they don't want to kind of like put their time and energy into their employees. The companies are actually the lazy ones and the ones who are, you know, not playing fair and cheating the system and not the people from what I'm hearing from you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually the other That's way around. Exactly the case. Right. So, yeah, so, yeah. Right. So, so it's like, it's corporate welfare and it's corporate, you know, you know, the corporations are actually sucking on the government teat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, you know, they, they throw it in our face that, you know, you can be automated at any time. So you better, you know, work twice as hard for half as much money, you know, or a robot's going to come in and take your job. But, but they don't, they, 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 they say that, but they'll, they'll do it anyway, if you're working hard or not. Right. Right. Yeah. Once, you know, once the spreadsheet says that it's cheaper to purchase that robot than it is to keep an employee on, that's exactly what they're going to do. Right. Exactly. They don't care if you have a family, you have expenses, you know, you're just a number on a spreadsheet and you know, you're a strain on their bottom line. Right. Right. Exactly. So, so that's the part that pisses me off with all these like pro life Republicans. It's like, but are they really like pro quality right. of life Republicans? They're pro life when it's in the womb, but after it's born, it's like, what about the quality of life? Oh, it doesn't matter if they mean nothing to the market, like just shoo, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just keep people healthy enough to keep them working and then, you know, then eventually automate them out of a job and then who cares where they go in society. Right, exactly. That's disgusting. And and then they wonder why my generation yeah. is deciding not to have so many kids or not having kids at all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. you can barely take care of yourself and you want to bring some kids into this world. It's like... I don't yeah. know. Like, I, I think it's, it's, it's like they have a mental illness. I don't, I don't know. Some of our leaders. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna you know, I mean, I live in New Hampshire and our minimum wage is still $7.25. It, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, can you... 
I mean, you can't live off of seven dollars and twenty. Yeah, an hour. at least here it's like. What, what do you think of all like the libertarians or the live free or die, you know, people? It's like okay, like you want to live free, but how about if I put you in the middle of the wilderness with like no resources or in the middle of the jungle? And just told you to like live free or die or something like that. You know, there's more. But to yeah, you can't even go into the wilderness and try to survive because you're going to get arrested because you're on somebody's land, probably. You know what I mean? So, like, so if you have no income, you have no way of surviving unless you can find a job, right? So you and, and you know, scrounge up your own food and build your own shelter because you're going to be building on someone's freaking property and you're going to be trespassing. Right, exactly. So, and, and that's why Thomas Paine talked about like the natural inheritance since like the land really doesn't belong to anybody. It was here like before anybody was born. So nobody can just say like this, you know, piece of floor is like mine. And it's not anybody else's because I mean, the, the floor never talked to you and told you that, hey, I belong to you. You know, it, it doesn't have a mind for something. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I mean, even if you're lucky enough to have a job nowadays, it's nothing more than like modern day slavery. You know, you're just the way you know you're just a debt slave. Right. It's it's, it's, it's the way crazy. everything's structured now. It's like you know you got mortgage, you got taxes, you got you know whether it be rent. It's right. It's and just, and the people you know, on the most welfare are you know the the the, the corporations. corporations. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like I'm tired of subsidized walmart workers you know they're holding food drives in their own stores because they don't pay their workers enough to afford to buy food right it's like you know aren't people upset that the fact that you got somebody a company that's paying their their weight you know their employees so low wages that they now they qualify for government benefits they're getting section eight they're getting food stamps they're getting all but these the, government yeah. programs and they're still working 40 hours a week but why is it they're the problem? Oh, they're lazy. They don't want to get off their ass and get a job. They were already working for it. Like, week. like the corporation doesn't want to get off its ass and you know create better working conditions and and pay a fair wage. So if anything, the corporation is being a leech and a drain on society. Yeah, yeah. People don't think of that. That the corporations are the ones that are causing all these these government programs to expand because they're paying people less and less, and there's more people right. that actually so, qualify for so these government programs. So, the the programs. real welfare queens and kings in our country are the corporate welfare kings and queens. You know. Yeah, and people need to remember that the very first welfare queen was a southern woman. You know, a white woman from down from the south. You know, right. It wasn't black people. It, it's, you know, most of the, the states that pay into these welfare programs are, are, you know, very conservative red states. Right. Exactly. Like that's, that's insane. It's, it's because, because people don't want to think. So, so let's the get, getting, getting back to your journey. So uh, the, uh, when the field technician uh, eventually like what happened? Did you, you, yeah, you said you quit and then. Well, actually that. I was forced to resign. Okay. So you were forced my, to you resign. Know, yeah. That, that was okay. another kick in the ass. It was like, because my, uh, my boss called me in and, you know, he wanted me to sign this piece of paper, pretty much kind of shutting me up. He didn't want me to kind of talk about the fact that. Right. Oh, it, it's so disgusting. So, yeah. And I was, yeah. you know, so basically he said, you either sign this document or you resign. Um, right. And I didn't sign it. I, I mean, you know, my mental health was kind of pushed to the brink. I wound up going into the hospital for a week, but he claimed that I resigned and then I couldn't even collect unemployment. I think oh, that was one of the reasons why Andrew chose us. God, that's crazy. Like they're so dirty. Like yeah. they, they're, 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 oh my goodness. Like, like, and, and but, but the schools never tell you like what these like how these people, you know, operate, it, yep. it, you, you know, you know, from my last job at the electronic store, it was a seasonal job, but California is a little more of like a liberal place. So we have like a $15 minimum wage and, you know, the corporate welfare Queens are all up in arms about it. But anyway, yeah. So, so he, like my, my, my general manager said like, we loved having you here. Like you were just amazing. You have a great attitude, but customer traffic is not what it used to be. So we're going to have to like not keep you after the season. And then he told me, he told me I'm, he said, I'm uh, 99% sure that you cannot uh, collect uh, uh, the benefits 
And then I said, okay, but let me read up on the laws. And I didn't tell him that. I thought that in my head. And then surely enough, I looked at California law and it said California is one of the states that uh, seasonals can and collect benefits. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, I, <Yeah. laughs> right? So it's, it's like they're always looking to just BS you in a way that like leaves you with the least and them with the most, even though right. they're sucking everybody dry, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's sick. It's so yeah. gross. You know, and, you know, my boss, he didn't want to pay, he didn't want to pay into the unemployment insurance. It was like, you know, so I got to, you know, pretty much starve to death so you can save a couple of hundred bucks a month or whatever, you know, maybe. Right. You know, I didn't even get a severance package. It was like, it was pretty, pretty, you know, working. For and a, after 14, 14 years, year, like, like we're not even talking about a year. We're talking about like 14 years, right? 14 years. Yeah. So how much did you accumulate after that 14 years? Um, accumulate. I didn't accumulate anything. I mean, that Oh, was, you mean you spent most of. Oh, you mean talking about like my, my salary? Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, we had some savings. I mean, we, you know, you blow through it pretty quick when you got like no income. Right. Right. For sure. We had a mortgage and we, you know, my daughter was, you know, my daughter was moving into college a week after I was, you know, kind of forced. Right. Right. But, but then I'm, I'm I'm just saying like, no, over that course of 14 years, like how, how much do you make? estimate oh i i you know i i, I started out um probably making about thirty five, forty thousand, and i wound up um making close to about eighty thousand dollars a year right okay so so then so if you were on unemployment like you'd at oh, least i would have got like maybe three hundred dollars a week max oh okay you know yeah so yeah, it wouldn't which... have been enough to pay the bills anyway you know right yeah but it would have been a you know it would have been a help i mean but to get right. zero I mean that, like I said, right? Like, that that's savings pretty fast. That's that's grotesque. Just like he, he here's the part chart that Chuck that really really like pisses me off the most. It's like when when you're young, at least like you know the schools are like, hey, you're a human being. Like let's teach you about how the world works. Let's help you to like know how to navigate through this you know crazy world that we live in but then it's like what and when you have a job it's like oh you matter you're like a productive member of society but then like when when that's not there anymore it's like okay like you're not a human being anymore okay bye right you know you better perform <laughs> it's and like, if you don't then you're out in the street that, you know? that, that is so gross it's yeah it's 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 like it like I don't even know what to say to that. It's it's like then 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 what is the point of like you you know learning all filling your head with all these things in school when you know that at any minute like they don't care about how well you do in school most of the time. It's like even even if you did like even if you were a straight A student and always made it on the principal's honor roll when your job is on automated away that's it like you know right right yeah. yeah 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 it's it's sick so you, know, you go to college for about four years to, to you know to kind of get a degree in something and then if that you know industry kind of collapses you know what are you supposed to do right you know there's no guarantee that oh okay you know you're going to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars on a college degree and oh if the industry goes away you know we'll we'll give you your money back it's like you know, and, and, you know, they're not going to say, hey, you know what, you might want to rethink signing up for this, this, you know, nursing course, because maybe you don't have the aptitude to, to be able to pass the test. I mean, there's a lot of people that go right. to school for nursing. Right, right. Because everybody's like, oh, we need nurses. But does anybody realize how tough it is to pass that test? Right, exactly. You know, I have a, a niece who is like really smart. It took her mm -hmm. four times to mm -hmm. pass that test. Yeah. You know? And if you don't pass the wow. test, they don't give you your money back. That's insane. You know, yeah. A lot of them wind up becoming like um, uh, licensed nursing assistants that probably, if you're lucky, make eleven, twelve dollars an hour. Right. And so you spend about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to learn how to be a, a home health care, home health. Right. You know, and, and they, they're making a lot of them are making like minimum wage. Right. I know. I know. It's it's insane. The, the, that's that's what I don't understand. It's like like the, these parents like if. If, if anybody's a parent 
with like kids in school, like I'd be pressuring the schools to talk about like, okay, but like what jobs are, are actually going to be there and stable and how would my you know son or daughter like transition into them. But, but they, they just say like, Oh, you know, just get the education and you know, it's all up to you after that. And, and like, but, but that's BS. Like they have no, um, be, because it's like you're a student, but at the same time, I'm feeling like you're also a customer because you know, that they're, 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 they're telling you, you know, you know, because a lot of times like what we hear is that like, Oh, you know, you just get an education to like be well-rounded and worldly and all of this like fancy esoteric stuff. But it's like, like who cares if you're like well-rounded and 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 all of this like fancy schmancy stuff if you're like out on the streets <laughs> right you know and everybody you know they go to college and the first thing they look at is like oh well i want to be a doctor because a doctor makes 200 and something thousand dollars a year or you know nobody talks about okay you want to be a doctor you want to go to school what's your chances of actually completing all the curriculum that re that is required for you to become a doctor and you would think somebody in that school would say, you know what, maybe you're not a good fit to become a doctor. Maybe you should go to school to become a welder or something like that. Right. You know, and, and they don't really look at, oh, well, you know, this isn't really a job that you'd be good at. But, you know, we're going to take your money anyway. Right, right. You, the, here's the part that bothers me, too. And, I mean, like, I, I don't care if anybody's a Bernie bro out there. But the thing is, is, like, if we take money from, you know, the hands of these, you know, super wealthy, even from Jeff Bezos – but we give it into the hands of bureaucrats, the bureaucrats are almost as incompetent and unhelpful as the corporations are. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have all these job retraining programs, and Andrew talked a lot about it, asking mm -hmm. about what's the percentage of people who actually get trained that actually become successful in the career that they're – and it, right. it was like a, between a 1% and 5% success rate for people who are retrained right. in different industries. Exactly. One or five percent. I mean that's that's like abysmal. That's abysmal. Like if, if you if you get that on the test, you fail. Like yeah. like if, if if you if you get if you get like a seventy five or below, that's already like a bad like a C, which is like average, but everybody tells you to get like ninety that that's so amazing, like how we put so much pressure on like young people these days to like perform in school, but we don't put pressure on the schools and the bureaucrats to like perform in our democracy. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, imagine saying, "Oh, this is there's a program. It's going to cost us a hundred million. And by the way, you know, you're going to waste between nine nine hundred and um, ninety nine million to ninety five million dollars is going to be right. Wasted. Like, like if if we want to talk about like incompetent people who are lazy and who are not doing their jobs, why don't we talk about the bureaucrats and the corporations? Why don't we yeah. start there? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't disagree right. with that at all. Right, exactly. It's 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 like that. I think I think they're they're a bunch of like overpaid, like dummies. It's it's yeah yeah yeah. And and what like like why like like here's the part that pisses me off. We can't have like a measly. Well, I mean, I think we should still like keep this voice for this movement that Yang started loud. But we can't have a measly forty eight thousand dollars assuming that yang will get in in 2024 and pass the freedom dividend like like you said on that show we can give like those billions of dollars to wall street and the banks but a measly forty eight thousand dollars for four years like we can't pass in 2020 for the people that they screwed over with their incompetence right <laughs> yeah yeah it, you know, it, and then they talk about fifteen dollar minimum wage. Oh, let's get a fifteen dollar minimum wage. I already well, had that. They've been asking for a fifteen dollar minimum wage for the last fifteen years. You know, right. of course, corporations are going to say, "Oh, yeah, okay, we'll give into the fifteen dollar minimum wage." The minimum wage right now, if it was tied to inflation, should be over twenty dollars an hour. Right. You know. Yeah. It's crazy. Fifteen. You can't even live off of fifteen dollars an hour. Right. I know. And 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 wait, but hang on a second. Doesn't taxes come out of that too? Yep. <laughs> right so where are the taxes going to you know what about the poor people you know the poor people were making 16 dollars an hour and now all of a sudden they change the right. law and they get a 15 dollar minimum wage what are they getting you know right. they're just gonna now be resentful for the guy that was making eight dollars an hour who just got bumped up to 15 dollars an hour and right. you know they're making 16 and they didn't get a penny right exactly it's 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 insane 
I mean, yeah. I mean that, that, the, yeah, but the, the, the part that bothers me is that we're, we need, I don't know if you agree, like more citizens in this country to put, to ask the hard questions and put pressure on all these institutions that are doing such a terrible job. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's like, just, just like, like, like that, that guy, like, like you told him that guy who was interviewing you on MSNBC, it's like, or like he's on drugs. It's like, Oh, we shouldn't give you the money. And then you said like, but you gave them all the money to like destroy our economy. And that was a responsible thing to do. Yeah. 3.5 trillion dollars. They printed money to give to the banks to bail out the mortgage industry. Right. It was crazy. You yeah. Know? And I didn't hear anybody on the media saying we can't afford it. It's going to raise everybody's taxes. You're like, Oh, it's, ne it's necessary. We have to do it. Right. Well, you know, universal basic income is, is pretty much going to be become necessary. Right. You know, you, For sure. It, it, you know, things are going to get pretty ugly, you know, especially where now Andrew's out of the race, you know, that, <sighs> you know, $15 minimum wage isn't going to save us. Right. For sure. It's not. And, and anyway, at that seasonal job, I was getting that anyway. And it was hardly anything. And when the especially tax in California, yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's like when the taxes come out, it's even less. And, and the higher the, 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 the money you get paid goes, the, the higher the taxes are anyway. So they're just right. taking out a bigger chunk out of your thing to go to, to whoever well, corporation is on welfare. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, we want Amazon to come into our town because it's going to create all these wonderful jobs. You know, right. they come in, they get this enormous tax break. They give you crappy, you know, jobs making $15 an hour if you're lucky. You right. know, and, and, and now they're taxing your uh, the local infrastructure. Right. You know, you're building roads and, mm -hmm. and everything to get people to this Amazon plant. Amazon's paying no taxes. You know, and, 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 and it's shutting like, down stores. And and one of yeah. the reasons I lost my seasonal job was because of Amazon. Like, right. You know, yeah, yeah. So so it it's it's all interconnected, uh, in a way. And it's it's like when when I was working on Thanksgiving, and they said. Everybody, every hour you work on Thanksgiving gets you overtime pay. So I wasn't even with my family. All of my overtime pay just went directly into taxes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because, you know, corporations are good at pushing the taxes down to the local level, you know? Right. Like I live exactly. in New Hampshire and we have like a very high property tax, you know, because right. corporations don't pay any taxes. So somebody's got to keep the, you know, the, the roads paved and the police on the beat and firefighters. Right. I mean, who's going to pay for all that if corporations So, so, are so do, do, you, do you live next to like some libertarian minded people there that... I mean, I like live in the town of Gostown in New Hampshire and, and they're, you know, most of the people that are registered, they're registered Republicans. Oh, okay. So, yeah. it, and, and then when you talk to them about these things, are they just like, it's a free market and like our system is the best do not complain or something like that. Oh, of course. They're all like, well, you know, if you're not making enough money, you're not working hard enough or you're not trying but, hard enough. But it's like all on you, right. You know, your circumstance is 100% you and you are the only one who can change it. Kind of thing. Right. Right. Kind of nonsense. The whole system is backed against you. Right. Right. So, so these people like are like, like, I don't want you to name names, but like, are, are is the, the corporations are probably mistreating them or they're probably having trouble with some of their bills or their finances and stuff like that. But it's like, they don't want to, they don't want to like acknowledge that reality or like what's going on. Well, these are people that are probably making decent money. You know, they have theirs right now. They don't really oh, realize okay. that they're, the corporations are trying to figure out ways to put them out of, a, you know, a work as well. Oh, okay. You know, as they kind of, you know, pass policies that are going to make it easier for them to do it. Got it. Got it. And, and it's like, well, like he, he, here's the analogy. It's like they, they basically climbed the ladder and they pulled it up on their way yep. there. So they're telling you to just like climb whatever it is, climb the walls when they have yeah, a they, ladder. They're climbing the you ladder know? and they're cutting the runs as they go up, you know? Right. And yeah. it's all your fault that you can't follow them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's so, so great. And, and then like, like at, at a local and state level, like, do you have these town halls where like stuff like this can be brought up or is it like not really? Well, the biggest, the, the issue, in, especially in New Hampshire, where we have like a lot of small towns is mm -hmm. people don't get involved in their local politics. You know, the only time right. people go out yeah. to vote is during the, the national elections, you know? So if you only have like 5% of the population voting, 
those are the people that are actually having their interests hurt. Right. You know, so people are yeah. either they're working too many so, hours, they don't like, really pay attention, they're not really educated, so they don't really feel right. like they can go out and make so, a, an educated choice to vote. But they don't realize that the people who are actually voting are the ones voting to raise taxes because they already have a good paying job, you know, and they want this. Wait, they're so voting they to that. raise taxes? Yeah, they vote to raise taxes because well, not and they're Republicans people turn out to vote. Yeah, they're Republicans. You they're know, Republicans in the and they vote to raise taxes. Because what they do is they put things on the ballot. It's like we need a new fire station or we need this or we need that. So, right. of course, the people who want those things are the ones that show up to vote. But the oh. people who don't realize that, well, if you want these things, somebody's going to have to pay for them. Mm -hmm. And then people's property taxes go up. Right. You know? Yeah. That's that's unbelievable. So, so it's, it's like, like, oh, we need a new fire station. Oh, of course we do. But then it's like, okay, now your taxes just went up like 15%. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have voted for that new fire station. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like the just like mindsets that are all about like instant gratification and they they never do any research or look into something. It's it's pretty bad. It it, it so so it's like it's like like these people are like kind of like the rednecks of the north. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely that attitude is that I have mine and now you need to go out and get yours and I'm going to make it as hard as possible for you to do. Right, right, right. So so it's like while you're going out to get yours, they erect as many walls and bulwarks as possible. So it's exactly. just like thing. And, and while you're trying to get yours, you're always in this, you know, quicksand of like bills and financial stress and everything like that. Yeah. And if you don't make it, it's all on you. Uh, yeah, that's so gross. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It, so, so, so then you, you, so, so was that your last job, the tech technician? Yeah. So I, I got another job doing the same thing, but making a lot more, a lot less money. So I was a manager. I had to take a job being a technician again with probably about, I think 35% pay cut. Oh, okay. So, so basically what it is, is that like it before in the past, like it's even worse for my generation now because of what these people did, but you're constantly having to reinvent yourself. You're yeah. constantly having to start from scratch. Whereas before you could have like worked your way up now, like the clock keeps resetting for people over and over again once they have to like look for another job. Well, right. I mean, that's, you know, you work for a company for a long time and you work your way up the ladder and it's like, Oh wait, this guy's making way too much money. You know, we need to kind of get him up and, th and then we can hire two people, you know, for the same price of, of the one person, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's like, just like, you know, you, you got to stay with the same company and be loyal and they'll take care of you. It's like, no, once you, you know, once you get to a certain level, it's like, oh, you know, we're paying this person too much and you know, we, we got to let them go. Right. Right. Exactly. So, so all of this, you know, it's like a pressure cooker, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's insane. And, and while we're, you know, here talking about this, like these people in charge of our laws are like getting all this money for not solving these problems. Yeah. You know, they, and they're voting to, to, to cut all these social safety nets because they want more tax breaks. Yeah, that's that's I, I don't know. It's it's like the 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 voice of the people is really being kind of like, but 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 like people people actually thought like Trump would like you know create all these jobs, but he's only created like a mess. Right. Yeah. No. Because he wrote he you know he ran on a pack of lies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And yeah, that's, that's, that's so great. But, but like, what, like, like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, what, what do you think like your children are going to, you know, like what direction this is all headed or yeah. Well, it's, you know, my daughter, she's, she's going to college and she's going into the mental health field, the me mental health field. So oh, okay. I think she's probably, I mean, because, you know, the way the mental health of this country is going, she'll probably be safe for a while yeah. you know, until maybe they decide to just do away with healthcare altogether. And it's just, if you can afford to pay for a doctor yourself, then, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really see anything good happening with healthcare if, if Trump gets reelected. Right, right. That's, uh, well, well, I mean, he's the one who needs like the most mental health right now. Well, right. Yeah. He's the one that's causing most <laughs> mental health problems in this country. You know? I mean, 
you know, financial insecurity is, is one of the biggest drivers for, for mental health issues. Right, exactly. And like that there, there was no financial literacy class probably anywhere in our country that no. that's like, yeah, like kind of like required. And that's what Andrew Yang was talking about. Being. Yeah, I mean, I went back, to, I went to the high school in the 80s, and we had like home economics, but it was like an elective course. It wasn't something that was mandatory. Right. So oh, and that was back in the 80s. So today, yeah, it's like, yeah it's, today, it's really nothing, you know, showing kids even how to write a check. Right, I know. But like, because Shakespeare is more important than writing a check and like making sure you can put food on your family's table. I mean, like, <laughs> it makes well, yeah. It, I mean, yeah. people think, well, school shouldn't be teaching basic life skills. That's up to the parents. Well, if the parents right. weren't taught, how the hell are they going to teach it? Yeah, them? yeah, exa exactly. That's, that's kind of my thing. So, so, so you lose the, the technician job and you get this like major uh, pay, you, you basically start all over in the same kind of job is what you're yeah. telling me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Starting back, back at the bottom, big pay, p big pay reduction. Um, yeah. and you know, but that's kind of when, you know, we started receiving universal basic income to kind of, and nice. it definitely helped with supplementing a lot of that, you know, a good amount of the, the uh, income loss. It didn't really right. cover at all. Right, you know, right. You know, a lot of people like, oh, you know, because, you know, it's out that I got, you know, that I resigned from my job. And people are like, oh, why is he getting the freedom dividend that he resigned from his job? He doesn't deserve it. Like, like well, wait, why did I we? I was forced to resign. I don't collect unemployment. <laughs> right. you know, there was a period where I had like zero income. And it, you know, it was like, well, you were making $80,000 a year. It's like, yeah, you know, a lot of that went towards, um, you know, we did have some savings, but a lot of it went towards paying the bills when I had like zero income coming you know? Right. Yeah. Like I, I, who are the people saying this? Have, have they, you know, people on, you know, obviously the online trolls, people making comments whenever right. we did a lot of interviews and people wrote a lot of the stories and you know, the comment sections, you know, everybody's right. like, Oh, why are you yeah. getting it? You know, right. Most of them was because they were jealous that they didn't get it. So right. It was like, oh, the freedom dividend's a bad idea. It's like, well, no, it's going to help everybody. It's not going to just help me. You know, yeah. and Andrew chose us because we were a middle class you know, family. And those are the people that were, you know, they felt they were left behind, you know, and that's the reason. Why right. Trump so, got left. so here, here, like I challenge all of those people to say like, why do all these corporations get welfare? Like right. I, I just ask them that, like, why are they getting all this free money? Why are, why, why are they, why, why is the government subsidizing like already wealthy corporations? And I don't know, like, what's their answer to that? If they're, if they're against, you know, government handouts. So when the government hands out things to, you know, the corporate sector, they're not against that kind of government handout or something like that. Like, well, because the corporations, they get, they get tax deductions, you know, so right. there's no program specifically that goes towards Walmart or Home Depot or any of these big box stores. It's just, you know, they can hire the high priced accountants and lawyers to figure out all the tax loopholes that were put in place to, you know, kind of favor them in the first place. So they wind up paying zero in taxes, you know, and then yeah. we're the ones that kind of have to, you know, pick up the slack for all the freaking, right. uh, all the, the stuff that's paid for in society. Somebody's going to run the government. You know, right. and then the people that are left behind, you have these very meager um, welfare programs, you know, go, oh, God forbid you give somebody who's got zero money, some money to buy, go out and buy food. You know, now you got to restrict right. it in every single way, you know, any government program that you get, it's just so restrictive, you know, and mm -hmm. people like some of them is like, it's not even worth collecting it. Right. And, um, the, and then there's, there's there. And, and then like when, but, but then like, it was funny, like Whoopi Goldberg asked, um, Joe Biden something about Andrew Yang's freedom dividend plan and then he he just hardly answered the question and he just pivoted to yeah. health he pivoted he pivoted to health care like right. how, like even if all health care was free in this country like are people going to eat band-aids to survive or something? Yeah, if you don't have a house, you know, if you don't have a roof over your head, you don't have food to survive. Guess what? You can have the best health care in the world and you're not going to survive. Right, I know. It's it's so dumb. It's it's like what what about what about quality of life? Like okay, what I'm I'm going to the doctor every day, but but like I'm not doing any I have no fulfillment or enjoyment or purpose, but I have a free doctor. <laughs> All right. And the, and the reason why these people are sick is because, you know, they don't have income. 
So right. now they go into the doctor to pay for things that they're, you know, that they're having health conditions because of the, you know, their low income, you know, they can't yeah, buy healthy yeah. food, you know, they're under financial stress or their mental health is, is in jeopardy. And, and it's like, so you just want to give people free health care instead of actually trying to solve the problems that cause people to go to the doctor in the first place. Right, exactly. It's, it's like, let's give like more money to the fire department, but like, let's play with matches at home or something. Like that. Right, right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty you idiotic. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Give everybody, you know, one of those inhalers cause they have an asthma, but we'll allow the big factories just keep polluting the air. Right. Exactly. It's, it's like, like we're, we're causing these problems, but it, it's, it's like, we're always going after symptoms and never the root causes. Right. That's, yeah, that's basically that's the point. bottom line. It's, yep. it, it's pretty, pretty bad. So, so that, so then that's when Andrew Yang's freedom dividend stepped in when you lost that job of 14 years where you yeah. were forced to resign. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, so that, so that brings us to this. So it's not only like automation that these jobs are being lost. It's also like very, very dirty office and corporate politics that are very cutthroat. Right. You know, the reason why they, they are automating certain jobs is because, you know, the, the cost of, of employees. You right. Know, and also, the, you know, the human factor is like, oh, I don't want to worry about somebody calling in sick or, you know, they might have family problems or, you know, a robot right. doesn't do that. A robot, a robot can work 24 so hours that, a day. So then why, why, bring, what, why, why bring kids into this world? Right. Yeah, you know, exactly. I'm, I'm sorry. Like how, like, how can you be pro-life? when you're not pro quality of life you know yeah, i mean these companies are making goods and services that cost money and they don't realize that well if nobody has money guess what they're not no going to be able to afford your goods and they're, services they're, yeah, yeah, yeah now they're just selling things to the less of the rest of the people that might have money and and slowly that you know they're shrinking and you know you got more and more rich people you know but it's very small amount of them and it's like the amount of money that they're holding what is it one percent has as, as as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent in this country but, but how many pairs of shoes and socks do they need how many electronics does one rich person need way less than what one you know a whole bunch of middle class families need you know yeah. You know, they might need a mini yacht to go out to their big yacht, you know, but they're not going to need, you know, everybody, you know, you're one person, you're only going to need one pair of shoes. Exactly. Right. You know, you're not going to eat much more, you know, so right. the it, amount of people that the money is in their hands, it's like, you know, a couple of hundred million dollars in a couple of million dollars in people, you know, in a couple of million people's hands, as opposed to a couple of million dollars in like one or two people's hands. It, right. You know, you're going to stimulate the economy, giving it to more people instead of putting the amount of money into smaller and smaller groups of people. Right. Like, I remember I was like, uh, actually like phone banking, um, in New Hampshire, but like, I'm sorry, like some of your people there, they were just like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> like Andrew is my second choice, but we think Klobuchar is like pretty cool or like, oh, but Pete looks like he has more experience, but it's like they look at all these aesthetics but they're right. not even looking at like what is the implications of all of this yeah, I, what I problems think... are they talking about trying to solve you know right right the basic things oh we want to raise a minimum wage we want to give everybody better health care mm -hmm. um, but nobody's talking about but, but, you know, what about all these people that can't get retrained for jobs that are going away what are you supposed to do with these truckers when all these trucks go automated and right. you know 65 year old truck driver what, oh i can see them being a windmill technician or a coder like come right, on, give right. Me give me a break. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, you, you know what it is? It's like we, 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 we either empower like the wealthy corporations or the bureaucrats, and those right. are like two sides of the same coin right now. Because well, everybody's running around. Nobody's got time. Nobody pays attention. So the government is is run by corporations. You know. I mean, that's right. basically, you know, everybody's scrambling to tr just try to make a living and they're like, you know what? I don't have time to pay attention to who's running for president if I have to go to, you know, work four or five jobs just to put food on the table. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it's, it's done by design. You know, and, it's you want to keep the population uneducated. They can't make, make uneducated. They can't make educated choices. They're under stress. So, of course, you know, trying to make a good decision oh when God. you're under stress. Yeah. Is ridiculous. You don't think very well when you're under stress. Like, Charles, you, you think harder than some PhDs I know. 
Yeah. <laughs> because it's like even the people who have degrees and they have like all these high accolades to their names, they don't think about these things either. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. It let me see. Oh yeah, yeah, here's another thing I wanted to say like I remember working in retail and the thing that they think is that like what'll get people to spend money is using uh these neuro-linguistic programming techniques on them. If if you don't know what I'm talking about like, you know, say, "Sir, how can I help you today? Or, or like shake their hand or like make it sound really appetizing. But you don't understand, like the money's on their pockets. Right. I was talking to a guy and he said he was going into advertising. And I was right. like, if you really want to be good at advertising, take yourself a psychology course. You know, because that's right. basically what, you know, advertising is just psychological warfare. You know, they're yeah. trying to figure out a way to get as much money out of you, even if you can't afford it, you know. Right. And, and that's that's the way they run government too. It's like, it's like, you know, it, it's psychological warfare, you know, it's like Bernie's the socialist and, you know, and it's like, no, I mean, what's, what socialist is the amount of money we freaking give these corporations. I mean, corp, you know, it's corporate socialism is what it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we like when, when you really look at it and you reframe these conversations, it's, it's all just, kind of it's it's all gonna make sense from there but i mean wow that's 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 the thing that's going on so so is it like charles um so so then now now the the freedom dividends what for you when did they stop it stopped in december so we got our last check in december Oh, okay. You got your last check in December. And then it's, it's like, so, but, but like before Andrew Yang ran for president, like how active was your family in politics? Well, we've always been pretty active. I mean, I, I, I like to think of myself as somebody who pays attention. Um, you know, my daughter was involved in the young Democrats and that's the reason why she um, wound up um, seeing Andrew at an event in Keene, New Hampshire, and the reason why we were nominated. Um, nice. You know, I volunteered for a few uh, campaigns. Um, I try to, you know, at least keep myself educated about local politics. Um, I, you know, I, I, you know, yes, I'm a registered Democrat, but I, I, I consider myself, you know, more of an independent. You know, I right. love the day that I could vote for a politician because I like them and not because they have an I or a D next to them. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I just yeah. think it's like if they make the most sense and if they can solve the problems, which is what I saw in Andrew. Let's go because yeah. these problems need fixing as soon as possible. But the good news is, the really good news is, is that now that the idea is already out there because I always think like you can get rid of like a, a, a person, but you can never get rid of an idea once, you know, people see it and, and, yeah. and, and like a ton of people see it. So I'm, I'm just thinking like you're hopefully Charles, like you're, you're still going to be active in talking about the importance of all of these things and kind of getting involved and maybe we can, you know, kind of start things hopefully on a more local level and do more kind of like independent media until like a groundswell just happens naturally. Do you kind of, yeah, I think, I think people, if, if, you know, if you, if you look, if you read into universal basic income and, and what it is, you know, and, and, and not think of it as just this huge government program that's going to hand out money, but think about the good that money in everybody's hands will do. I mean, right, right now we got a, an economy that's worth what two hundred and fifty trillion dollars. Right. Um, you know, back in the year two thousand, it was probably half of that. But the median right. income back in two thousand was probably fifty-seven thousand dollars. The median income today is only sixty-three thousand dollars. So if you think about it, an economy that's probably more than doubled, um, yet you have a median income that has only gone up. You know, not what maybe ten or fifteen percent. People don't think of that stuff. I mean, there's, there's so much money swirling around in the economy, you know, but most of it is, is, is just huge financial transactions from corporations. Right. It's, you know? it's all being funneled to a very select few. Like, I, I like to call them like American royalty even though like yeah. for democracy and stuff, I think, I think we do have like a, like a Royal corporate class in this country that you, you might, they don't have like crowns or tiaras, but they might as well, you know? 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, people might get a paycheck, but you know, you get a paycheck on Friday and it's gone by Saturday. You know, right. After all the bills are paid and you got nothing left. Right. Right. It's, 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 it's very sickening. Uh, I'm, I mean, but yeah, but, but I think, I think if, if more people kind of like reframe these kinds of conversations and people like, I'm just going to tell you something, Char Chuck, you should not be, just, I, I really like what you did with that, you know, news media guy. This is what we should keep doing. Instead of these ideas being on the defensive, they should be on the offensive. Like, right. like, like not, nothing to be embarrassed about, nothing to be shocked at just, just when, when somebody tells you, Oh, like free money. Oh, you don't deserve it. Say like, so the, so, so the corporations do. So these people they deserve free money. Exactly. So right. Exactly. So, so, free so money, they, but average Americans don't. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, 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 and then, you know, let's wait to see what their response is and, and how that right. plays out. Because did you notice Chuck between you and me, no one on that debate stage challenged Andrew Yang on anything. Yeah. They, they ne like, and, and when Andrew Yang started the conversation about straight cash into people's hands, like they ended it and they ignored it after that. Right. So I think right now, the main problem is not that we cannot argue the merits of what this is. The main problem is that we can't let them ignore it because the only power they have is ignoring it. Because when you look at the data and the facts and uh, you know, you know, all of the practicalities, it just makes sense, but they want to drown out our voices and that's what we can't let happen. And they're afraid that the only thing that they're going to be able to talk about is the price tag. It's like, well, I, I can't adopt universal basic income because the price tag is too high. Right. But they but don't the, talk about, you know, what's the cost that if you don't do it. Right. And, and what about the price tag for the, the, the bailouts that didn't even help the economy? Things are as bad as they've ever been. So right. like, don't we just think about it as a bailout refund? Yeah. That's that's what it is. It's going to be. It's going to be a refund of our 2008 money. You know, and a lot of, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of it too is, is, is all our data is getting sold online and we're not getting Right, right. Data. So, so I, I, I look at it this way. If you label it as a, you know, a, a, a corporation and government corruption refund, it sounds, it sounds much more, uh, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, appetizing. This is a refund to the American people for all the years of corruption, incompetence, stupidity, evil, neglect, and brainless behavior of our corporations, our politicians. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a <laughs> dividend paid out. I mean, it's just like right. a stock dividend. You know, nobody right, exactly. Apple pays out a dividend. Right, right. It, it's it's the fuel to get your car started because it's like if you have a car but it has no fuel in it, people are like. Oh, well, you're too lazy to drive the car. No, you idiot. The car doesn't have any fuel. We just put a little bit of fuel in it and we'll get yeah. somewhere. But you're refusing to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't have any yeah. time to work because I'm too busy going from gas station to gas station because right. it's so damn expensive. All right, exactly. So, so this is, this is the kind of energy. You know, you, know, you know, the United States was founded on like a revolution. Well, yep. I mean, we all know that. So, so that's why I decided to name my channel like Revolutionary Thinking. And this is the kind of revolutionary thinking we're going to need from people like you and Kyle to get this idea to the finish line. And, and we just challenge these institutions and these corporations. And, you know, I just hope everything goes well from there. Well, yeah. I mean, when I tell people what I spend the money on, it's like, oh, what do you mean? You didn't buy booze. You didn't do this. It's like, no, it went to my it's daughter's not, it's, education. It's not even in your interest. Right. It's not even in your interest. Those things aren't even in your interests. Right. You know, you know, so, so how can like the corporate media just slander people like you and me and, and, but you know, who does, you know, buy a lot of booze and do a lot of drugs. Some of the people on wall street, some of the rich people, some of the richest people in this country do all those behaviors and they got their money from inheritance. So, you know, yeah. shove it to those. Yeah, people. look at this administration. I mean, they're all going out and having all these drinks and, and who's picking up the tab? And, the and, and right. And, and Pete Buttigieg went to a wine cave. He's doing booze. Yeah. His friends are doing booze. What, they're, they're the ones being sub. They're, they're getting the welfare. They're getting the right. welfare, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we have to flip the script. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah.
every time this is being talked about, like I like flip the script and and hopefully uh, more local politics can get involved to implement Andrew's ideas because I, I I just I just thought maybe that's what Andrew's campaign was. It was just a an ignition, and we just got to keep going. Keep right, and that's what he told me when you know we we met back when in, in uh, I think October of 2019 right. um is you know he wanted to introduce the idea of universal basic income and, and warn about the fourth industrial revolution he really wasn't too concerned about becoming the nominee he just wanted to start the to conversation start, okay mission accomplished even though this yeah. conversation was started at the founding of the country and after with civil rights with martin luther king jr and then even with nixon like we but this time we just can't let it fade away into obscurity yeah, I mean, it's just enough money to survive. It's not to, you know, have a, you know, a very, uh, you know, rich lifestyle. It's it's right. just enough to put food on your table, hopefully a roof over your head, you know, and then any of the and, finer things and, in life and that not, you want, and, you got to go out and work yeah. for. And, and not, not only that, but it's like, it, it's like redu a reducer of stress. And then yep. it, they'll, they'll, they'll be like a new American renaissance of like creativity and ideas and like interesting things happening. Because think about what, like, you know, if you introduce the universal basic income and you think about, okay, what would happen? I mean, suicide rates would drop. Crime would drop. Um, right. There's so many positive things that right, would right. happen. And and we've already been giving universal basic income and, and a large amount, not like a minuscule amount to the corporations and the politicians, and they've just been squandering it. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you know, we, we've already been giving them universal basic income for like a hundred years in this country, who knows how long. Like, yeah, yeah so, so why not, why not take it, take it from like incompetent people who are getting welfare from us that they don't deserve and just give it directly to us. <laughs> Yeah, you give yeah. the corporations a ton of money to get their businesses off the ground, and all we get is low-paying jobs and all their employees that are on our welfare. They're right, on welfare. exactly. That's what we get. Right, right, right. So, so it's it's time to stop paying into corporate welfare and start paying into subsidies for the citizens. Yeah. So, so that's what that, that that's what we can do. We can just call the corporate welfare and uh, citizen investments. How about that? Yeah. In that investment. Right. Right. So, so now, now you see the whole thing is just turned on its head. It's right. just, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're going to need anyway. Um, like some guys here to, to, to help us out with some of our stuff, but it's, it's really been a pleasure and Charlie, Chuck and I, and I look forward into speaking with you more. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Been fun. Excellent. All right. See Thanks you later. All right. Take care. Take care.